Okay, this is module 25. And now knowing what we know about transformations, um, we should be able to do the rest of these problems fairly simply. So 25, the first topic in there, this really should have been in the previous module, but for some reason it's in the 25th module. It says translating the graph of an absolute value function in two steps. So we already know how to do this. We've done it with the squared. No big difference, okay? Um, you're going to take those common points, right? 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 2. And you're going to start shifting them around. Because you are given an image, you can just literally take the points and move them around and plot in the new spots, okay? Um, so we'll go ahead and... Um, Take the point negative 2, 2, and what are the translations that we're going to have to do to this? Um, this means we're going to add 3 to the x values, which is going to move it to the right 3. And then this, we're going to have to add 2 to the y values, which is going to make it move up 2. So take this x value and move it over 1, 2, 3, and then also move it up 2. So it'll be at about there. That's the new position for this point. Take the next point and move it over one, two, three, and up two. Then take this point, move it up one, two, three, and over two. So now it's right here. This one is a little bit off. Sorry. And then move this point over one, two, three, and up one, two. And then this point that was here, now it's the peak, but it was at two, two. We have to move it over one, two, three, and then up two. And so we end up with a point there. And so then now, I know it looks a little bit off. I kind of got my measurements mixed up. But now the new graph is here. So it's the same V shape, it's just shifted over to the right three and then shifted up two units, okay? Now, the bottom is asking us some information about this, okay? So it says how the leading coefficient affects the graph of the absolute value function. And it really wouldn't make a difference what kind of function it is. What you need to know is how these numbers in front affect the parent function, okay? So it says, for each function, choose whether the graph opens upward or downward. So it opens upward if the, the um, number in the front is positive and it opens downward because of a reflection, right? If the number in the front is negative. So this one would work upward. This one would open up upward. And this one, because it has a negative, would open downward. So it almost looked like a letter A, right? Without the bar across, it would be going downward this way. Whereas these two would be upward like Vs. Okay. Now it says for part B, choose the equation with the narrowest graph. Remember what we talked about, narrowest and widest. The bigger the number is, bigger than one, um, the narrower it's going to be. And the widest is the smaller fraction, right? Closest to zero, um, that's going to make it the widest. So basically, look at the numbers without the signs. Do not look at the signs, okay? The signs do not tell you whether it's narrow or wide. All the signs tell you is whether it's up or down, okay? So between one, one third, and four, which one of these is the greatest value? That would be four. So this graph is going to be the one with the narrowest graph. It's just going to be narrow and opening downward because of the negative. Whereas, which one of these values is the lowest? Well, one third is smaller than both of these values. So that graph is going to be the one that is the widest. It's just opening upward. Okay. Now, there are some different kinds of questions we can get with this topic. So I wanted to do another example. So... They may not give me the equations, they may give me the graphs, and then I've got to give them this information, okay? So it says, for each coefficient, choose whether it is a positive or a negative. 
So for A, because it's opening upward, would be a positive. For B, because it's opening upward, should be a positive. For C, it's going downward, and for D, is going downward. So these two would have a negative coefficient, okay? Then it says choose the coefficient that is closest to zero. Closest to zero is the same thing as saying the lowest value without the sign, okay? And that's how you know which one's going to give you the widest graph, okay? So this one is the one that looks like the widest, right? Um, if you look at it like if there are two doors, this one looks like the doors are open more than all these other images, okay? So the answer for part B would be A. A looks like it's open the widest. Now C says choose a coefficient with the least value. And when it's saying the least value, that does include sign, okay? So now they want me to look at the number and its sign. Well, I promise you that negative numbers are lower than positive numbers, right? So immediately, these two should not be an option when you're looking for the lowest value, okay? It should be these two. Now remember, if the graph is narrower, it means that that number by itself is bigger. Wide graphs mean that number is closer to zero, which means it's a smaller value. So essentially what we're looking for here is the narrowest downward graph. And that happens to be D in this particular scenario. Now for part D, it says choose the coefficient furthest from zero. So this is the one that looks the narrowest. We don't care whether it opens upward or downward. It doesn't ask me about that. It just wants to know which coefficient is furthest from zero. It doesn't matter whether it's further away to the left and then as a negative or further away to the right as a positive. All that matters is that it's further away from zero. Which of the four graphs looks like it's the narrowest? It has the doors closed the most, right? That would still be graph D, okay? Now, part E says choose the coefficient with the greatest value. Now, this is asking me to consider the signs. So when you're talking about whether a number is bigger or lower, the negatives are instantly going to be smaller than the positives, right? So you're only supposed to be looking at A and B. And again, remember, if the graph is wide, that value is small. If the graph is narrow, that value is big. So we're essentially looking for, um, with the greatest value, it should be the narrowest upward graph. I don't know why I had widest. That's incorrect. Okay, so narrowest ET, there we go, something like that, okay. Um, so between these two that are positive, this one looks like it's more narrow, so this option should be B. Choose the coefficient with the greatest value, it's the narrowest upward graph. So keep that in mind, what I have in parentheses is not given to you in Alex. This is information that I'm giving to you to make sense of what they're asking for. So when you see the phrase, choose a coefficient close to zero, what they're looking at is for the widest graph. Nothing about whether it's open upward or downward. When they ask you to choose the coefficient with the least value, they're asking you for the narrowest downward graph. So here they do care about the sign. When they're saying choose a coefficient furthest from zero, they don't care whether it's negative or positive. All they care is which one is narrowest completely. Which one has the doors that look like they're closed? I don't care if they look like they're closed up top or closed at the bottom. Doesn't matter. And then E, choose the coefficient with the greatest value. That means the narrowest upward graph. Okay. So now we have um, this topic here. So it says writing an equation for a function after a vertical translation. So if the graph of the function g is defined by 4x squared plus 5 is translated vertically by 3 units, it becomes the graph of a function h. Find the expression for h. So they want h of x equals, and they want you to tell them what it is. Well, remember what a vertical translation does. If I go back to my notes over here, a vertical translation is the same as like step 4 here. And what do you do? You add or subtract that number outside the parent function using the same sign, okay? So 
So I'm going to take this here, 4x squared, whatever it is, and outside the parent function, so this is my new parent function, outside of that, I'm going to, well actually the parent function is x squared, so I shouldn't box this, but outside of x squared, um, I should be, it's upward by 3, so I should be adding 3. Now whether you do that or you do 4x squared and add the 3 here and then push the 5 over to the side, it doesn't matter because in the end, you ultimately end up with 4x squared plus 8. And this is the expression that they want for h of x, okay? So now here we have this graph and it says translate vertically um, downward by 6 units. Find the new expression f of x. So here they want me to call it f of x. Alex will already have this. They'll just have a big box here for you to type in your answer. So I'm going to take the original function I was given, g, and I'm going to vertically translate it downward 6, which means I have to minus 6 outside the basic function. So I'm going to have the minus 6 out here. When I simplify this, I end up with negative x squared minus 3 because positive 3 minus 6 is a negative 3. Let me see if I have one more example of this. Now we go into a different topic. So I'm going to stop this video here and continue with the